this article um, talks about a 3% incidence of brain aneurysms in the general population. Um, when they do rupture, they become a medical and neurosurgical emergency um, called an aneurysmal uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage or SAH. Um, SAH is an emergency characterized by a worst or first headache of one's life. Um, also in patients with migraines, uh, the, this type of SAH headache is very distinct and instantaneously maximal in onset and can peak uh, in pain scale uh, instantaneously. Um, this type of uh, so-called uh, thunderclap headache um, happens that quickly that it's like a bolt of lightning with the after coming rumble of thunder of complications that follow. And that's uh, why it's uh, termed as such. Um, this headache should prompt 911 uh, call uh, because it's an emergency and a rapid uh, visit to the nearest emergency department uh, with the CAT scanner. So my name is uh, Dr. William David Freeman. I'm a professor of neurology at, at Mayo Clinic in Florida and uh, work in the neurointensive care unit with my colleague, Dr. Robbie Talk. Uh, my name is Robbie Talk. Uh, I'm one of the cerebrovascular neurosurgeons at Mayo Clinic, Florida, and we're going to talk to you uh, today about our article on management for intracranial aneurysms and subarachnoid hemorrhage. Thanks, Dr. Talk. Yeah, and the title of the article is in the uh, thematic review on neurovascular diseases and uh, the upcoming issue of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. The title is The Diagnosis and Treatment of Unruptured Intracranial Aneurysms and Aneurysmal Subarachnoid Hemorrhage uh, by Dr. Talk, uh, Tasneem Hassan, uh, Caitlin D'Souza, Jeff uh, Brent Peel and uh, yours truly. So uh, thanks, Dave, for this introduction about the paper. Uh, in summary, the, the manuscript discusses aneurysm in two settings. The first setting is the unruptured aneurysms, which could be symptomatic from new onset of headaches or mass effect. The second setting is from ruptured aneurysm. And the take home message is that uh, the, the pain with ruptured aneurysm is usually described as the worst headache of life. Uh, and that's how patients typically present. And uh, they, see, they should seek uh, closest emergency room and any uh, ambulance or EMS system is trained to uh, you know, uh, move those patients along their care to tertiary care facilities who are able to handle ruptured aneurysm. Given that the complications that occur with aneurysm rupture uh, require multidisciplinary team care involving uh, vascular neurosurgeons, uh, neurologists, neurocritical care, um, and specialized monitoring equipment, including specialized nurse training, allied health, physical occupational, speech therapy, nurse practitioners, PAs, and pharmacy. Uh, for patients who are weighing their uh, options for treatment, uh, for their unruptured aneurysm, uh, they should uh, see a specialized neuro-neurosurgical center, such as Mayo Clinic, to weigh the risk uh, versus benefit ratio or equation for their aneurysm. And uh, just to kind of walk through this in the take-home points, figure one uh, shows these uh, the locations of the intracranial aneurysms very nicely around the circle of Willis um, and the aner differing aneurysm sizes. Uh, table two uh, shows the historical um, importance of the size and growth rate based on uh, natural history of unruptured aneurysms. Uh, and table three goes over the components of the phases aneurysmal risk score, uh, which include um, the, po the population involved, uh, the presence or absence of hypertension, um, age being uh, greater than or less than 70, uh, the size of the aneurysm, and it starts off, uh, you know, less than seven or greater than seven in different components. So up to 10 and even 20, uh, adding higher rupture rate risk. Um, and then the last two components in involve uh, whether there's a history of prior uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage from aneurysm, and then the location uh, either in the uh, internal cerebral artery, MCA, uh, ACA, what we call PCOM or posterior circulation, um, and then the last uh, uh, sort of take-home points dovetail into that second half, which is if the aneurysm ruptures. In figure two, it shows um, this complex uh, pathophysiology called delayed cerebral ischemia, and that's due to blood products of the aneurysm that create this sterile inflammation around the brain's uh, large arteries. 
and that creates um, this delayed uh, vasospasm we can see on angiograms and TCDs um, and CT angiograms with perfusion. Uh, but this other process called delayed cerebral uh, schema is really uh, very complex, involves perhaps neuronal mechanisms um, and, uh, and neuroinflammation uh, there. And then um, I, I think for the, for the audience, um, table four uh, goes over what, we, what historically was uh, defined as these, these severity or prognosis scores called Hunt and Hess. That goes back to the 1970s and was really uh, graded to stage how severe the patient was when they came in with their subarachnoid hemorrhage from one to five. So uh, typically these poor or higher grades uh, that were comatose, for example, uh, there was a delay until they rallied and improved to get surgery um, due to the cooperative aneurysm studies. However, um, there was a shift toward earlier surgery so that you could uh, be more aggressive in treating the vasospasm and delayed cerebral schema. And then the, these uh, World Federation of Neurologic uh, uh, Surgeon Scale or WFNS um, has to do is sort of what most people use driven by the Glasgow Coma Scale. Um, and then the modified fissure is just the degree of uh, bleeding on CAT scan. So there's uh, uh, the, the figure uh, that shows this very complex uh, giant basilar aneurysm. Uh, would you mind uh, elaborating uh, how that's treated uh, thanks, Dave, for uh, detailing uh, the, the highlights of the manuscript. But in summary, this uh, picture illustrates a giant aneurysm of the mid basilar artery, which is uh, one of the most challenging aneurysms we deal with. And uh, the way we treated this aneurysm in is in a staged fashion uh, because it was ruptured. And uh, in the first phase, we put coils to prevent the risk of re rupture. Uh, in the second phase, we dealt with the uh, complications from this aneurysm, which were hydrocephalus, where the patient needed a shunting or EVD diversion. Initially, that was converted to a shunt. Mass effect, uh, I'm sure you remember this patient. Uh, you used every medical management you could use, including hypothermia, and uh, we required, you know, it, it, the control of the intracranial pressure required craniectomy. Uh, to remove the bone so the brain will swell in the acute phase. And ultimately, the patient had also vasospasm requiring medical management plus balloon angioplasty for spasmolysis. And ultimately, uh, we ended up uh, replacing the bone with an implant to repair and uh, putting a permanent shunt. Uh, subsequently, the aneurysm did recur because the only coil we put, uh, coils, multiple coils, were geared to reducing the risk of bleeding, but uh, the vessel walls were falling apart and we required placement of a flow diversion in a delayed phase. And ultimately the patient had a great outcome considering what he had. And this case highlights the severity and the spectrum of disease, uh, severity from benign to becoming very malignant, disabling patients and how an integrated care requiring multi-step approach and staged approach to deal with the problem at the peak time. So with every phase during care, you prioritize one treatment to, uh, to optimize and optimize the patient's care to, uh, to improve outcome. And some final take home points that uh, I recognize uh, Robbie from this was that, um, you know, the, the question comes up, how does this defining relate to clinical uh, practice? Um, May is Stroke Awareness Month, so number one, aware the awareness that three out of about 100 people have an aneurysm or 3% is very important, and that it comes in two flavors. First, uh, some patients are found incidentally to have these aneurysms during a workup for migraine or something unrelated on an MRI scan or CAT scan. Uh, this is still helpful because it can be followed and, and uh, see if it grows and treated before it ruptures. Uh, the second flavor is those uh, patients who never know they had an aneurysm until it ruptures, and that's what we called SAH earlier, and they should seek out attention uh, by calling 911 immediately um, and getting treatment. Uh, Robbie, uh, would you like to comment on any uh, future directions on, on research? So uh, thanks, Dave, uh, for highlighting uh, this manuscript, and this question about research is very important at every segment of care for aneurysm. A first step, asking ourselves who is at high risk of having those aneurysms from genetic knowledge and information, 
uh, once patients are prone at developing aneurysm, how can we slow down the progression? How can we prevent them from rupture? And if they bleed, how can we prevent complications? Many patients do help and they ask us the question, how can we help as well? And as we have seen in, in any integrated system, for example, collecting blood on similar patients, analyzing the genetics for those patients to know more, to understand more is essential for future care of aneurysm because uh, this is a devastating disease. And one uh, take home message is that aneurysm rupture is management of damage. It's, it's a damage control situation. The damage already happened and we would rather uh, treat patients before the damage happens. I think that's the uh, greatest benefit that we can draw uh, in patients uh, in aneurysm care. So uh, I hope that uh, we can find more answers. Aneurysm is a fairly complex disease. I think it affects a large population, but as we come to understand, there is a genetic predisposition for patients. There is uh, risk factors that could be modified, and there is an integrated team care approach for caring for those aneurysms. And I strongly encourage people um, to look through the manuscript. It is a great outline for what's our current knowledge of aneurysm, put in a nice simplified document for the readers to enjoy. Uh, we enjoyed all of us on behalf of the authors working on it. And I'm sure uh, many people will enjoy reading it and will find it interesting and helpful. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.